how to calculate n factor or valency factor. Well, I will teach you super easy trick to calculate n factor or valency factor. Firstly, we will learn calculating n factor of acids. In case of acids, we would just dissociate the acid. Then the n factor of any acid is equal to total number of hydrogen ions. For example, consider these acids. Now when HCl dissociate, it produces hydrogen ion and chlorine ion. We know that there is only one hydrogen ion, so the n factor of HCl is 1. In case of nitric acid, when it dissociates, it produces one hydrogen ion and one nitrate ion. Here, there is only one hydrogen ion, so the n factor of nitric acid is also 1. In case of sulfuric acid, when it dissociates, it produces two hydrogen ions plus one sulfate ion. Here, there are two hydrogen ions, so the n factor of sulfuric acid is 2. Remember that there is also one another possibility. When sulfuric acid dissociates, it can also produce one hydrogen ion plus HSO4 ion. Here, the hydrogen ion is 1. So in this case, the n factor of sulfuric acid is 1. In case of boric acid, it is a weak acid. I mean, it cannot easily donate hydrogen ions. It gives only one hydrogen ion and water. For example, it dissociates into one hydrogen ion plus H2BO3 ion. Here, there is only one hydrogen ion, so the n factor of this acid is 1. Similarly, acetic acid is also a weak acid. It cannot easily donate hydrogen ion. It also gives one hydrogen ion and water. For example, it dissociates into acetate ion plus one hydrogen ion. Here is only one hydrogen ion, so the n factor of acetic acid is also one. Now in case of these compounds, we can see that they have no hydrogen ions. In such cases, we will always add water to them. For example, I add water to sulfur dioxide. I get H2SO3. We know that when H2SO3 dissociates, it gives two hydrogen ions. This two hydrogen ion means that the n factor of sulfur dioxide is 2. Secondly, I add water to sulfur trioxide. We get H2SO4. We already know that when H2SO4 dissociates in water, it gives two hydrogen ions. Two hydrogen ion means that its n factor is 2. So the n factor of sulfur trioxide is also 2. Thirdly, I add water to carbon dioxide gas. We get H2CO3. It is also known as carbonic acid. We know that when carbonic acid dissociates in the water, it gives two hydrogen ions. These two hydrogen ions means that the n factor is 2. So the n factor of carbon dioxide is 2. Thus remember that in case of these three compounds, we will always add water to them. Now for phosphorus compounds, we use this common trick. N factor is equal to total number of oxygen minus 1. For example, consider these acids. In case of H3PO4, we can see that the total number of oxygen is 4. We know that N factor is equal to total number of oxygen minus 1. So I write N factor is equal to 4 minus 1 is equal to 3. So the N factor of H3PO4 is 3. In case of H3PO3, we can see that the total number of oxygen is 3. 
the n factor of this compound is equal to 3 minus 1 is equal to 2. So the n factor of H3PO3 is 2. In case of H3PO2, we can see that the total number of oxygen is 2. I write n factor is equal to 2 minus 1 is equal to 1. So the n factor of H3PO2 is 1. Thus remember that using this simple method, we can easily find n factor of any acid. Now we will learn calculating n factor of bases. In case of bases, n factor is equal to total number of hydrogen ions present in a compound. For example, consider these compounds. In case of sodium hydroxide, we can see that there is only one hydroxide ion. So its n factor is 1. In case of aluminium hydroxide, we can see that there are three hydroxide ions. So its n factor is 3. In case of barium hydroxide, we can see that there are two hydroxide ions. So its n factor is 2. In case of magnesium hydroxide, there are two hydroxide ions. So its n factor is 2. In this potassium hydroxide, there is one hydroxide ion. So its n factor is 1. What about the n factor of ammonia? Well, we already know that ammonia is a base, but it doesn't contain any hydroxide ion. Now as usual, we will add water to it. As a result, we get ammonium hydroxide. Here, we can see that it contains only one hydroxide ion, so its n factor is 1. Thus remember that the n factor of NH3 is 1. Therefore, we say that the n factor of any base is equal to its total number of hydroxide ions. Now we will learn calculating n factor of salts. Also noted down these common ions with their respective charges. Firstly, we will learn breaking any salt. Consider this general form of a salt. When we break the salt into two parts, the Y subscript will shift to the A and the X subscript will shift to the B. Here, the n factor of any salt is equal to total charge on cation or total charge on anion irrespective of their signs. For example, consider these salts. In case of sodium chloride, I will break it into two parts. We know that the charge on sodium is positive one and the charge on chlorine is negative one. I always take the cation part. The cation part is sodium and the charge on it is positive 1. We already learned that n factor of any salt is equal to total charge on cation or total charge on anion. Here, the total charge on sodium is 1, so the n factor is also equal to 1. Thus, the n factor of sodium chloride is 1. In case of calcium carbonate, I divide it into two parts, calcium and carbonate. We know that the charge on calcium is positive 2 and the charge on carbonate ion is negative 2. Here, the cation is calcium and the charge on cation is positive 2. So the n factor of this compound is 2. In case of potassium sulfate, I divide it into two parts, potassium ion and sulfate ion. We know that the charge on sulfate is negative 2 and the charge on potassium is positive 1. Now listen carefully. This 2 means two potassium ions. Let me repeat it. This 2 means two potassium ions. We already know that the charge on one potassium ion is 1. So the charge on two potassium ion will be two. Hence the total charge on cation is positive two 
Thus, the n factor of this compound is 2. Now, in case of aluminium sulfate, we break it into two parts, aluminium and sulfate ion. We know that the charge on aluminium is positive 3 and the charge on sulfate is negative 2. But here, this 2 subscript with aluminium means that there are two aluminium ions. We already know that one aluminium ion carries positive 3 charge. Then two aluminium ions carry positive 6 charge. The total charge on cation is 6, so its n factor is 6. Thus the n factor of aluminium sulfate is 6. Now in case of copper sulfate, I break it into two parts, copper ion and sulfate ion. We know that the charge on copper is positive 2 and the charge on sulfate ion is negative 2. The total charge on cation is 2, so its n factor is also 2. Thus the n factor of copper sulfate is 2. In case of magnesium carbonate, I break it into two parts, magnesium ion and carbonate ion. The charge on magnesium ion is positive 2 and the charge on carbonate ion is negative 2. The total charge on cation is positive 2, so its n factor is 2. Thus the n factor of magnesium carbonate is 2. Now in case of aluminium oxide, I break it into two parts, aluminium and oxide part. The charge on aluminium is positive 3 and that on oxygen is negative 2. This too means that there are two aluminium ions. We know that one aluminium ion carries positive 3 charge, then two aluminium ions carry positive 6 charge. The total charge on cation is 6, so its n factor is also 6. Thus the n factor of aluminium oxide is 6. Thus using this method, we can easily calculate the n factor of any salt. Now we will learn calculating n factor of ions. Well, the n factor of ions is equal to its apparent charge. For example, consider these ions. We can see that the charge on magnesium is 2, so its n factor is 2. The charge on aluminium ion is 3, so its n factor is also 3. The charge on chlorine ion is 1, so its n factor is also 1. The charge on sodium ion is 1, so its n factor is also 1. The charge on nitrogen ion is 3, so its n factor is also 3. And the charge on bromine ion is 1, so its n factor is also 1. Therefore, remember that n factor of any ion is equal to its charge. Finally, let me teach you calculating n factor of atoms. Remember that n factor of any atom is equal to its valency. For example, consider this periodic table of some famous elements. Remember that the groups are numbered according to Roman numbers. Now I write 1, 2, 3 and I stop. Secondly, I write 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 and I stop. This number shows the valency of each group. The valency of sodium is 1, so its n factor is also 1. The valence of magnesium is 2, so its n factor is 2. The valence of fluorine is 1, so its n factor is also 1. The valence of nitrogen is 3, so its n factor is also 3. Therefore, using this method, we can easily find the n factor of any atom. I hope that you have learned all about calculating n factor.